This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Ramika Vincent Leary and welcome to this edition of In Studio. It was founded as Pensacola Junior College in 1948, but now 70 years later, Pensacola State College is making some innovative educational strides. During this edition of In Studio, we'll take you on a journey that encompasses the college's past, present, and future. If you thought you knew the full story, hold on. There's so much more to be revealed. Get ready because the best is yet to come. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back everyone from 1948 to 2018. 70 years is quite a milestone. In fact, much has changed since Pensacola Junior College opened its doors in the Aiken Boarding House on the corner of Palafox and Cervantes Streets. During this special edition of In Studio, we'll share candid moments with those whose lives have been impacted through the college, both past and present. In this segment, we'll focus our attention on the past. Uh, first, it is a joy to welcome Councilwoman Marie Young, who holds dual status as a PJC and Booker T. Washington Junior College alumna. Next, I'm pleased to introduce former WSRE TV General Manager Eric Smith, who was on hand when WSRE hit the airways in 1967. Edward Moore is a PSC trustee, past foundation president, and board member who attended PJC in the late 1950s. And like Edward, our next guest, David Collins, also attended PJC. He's the owner of David Collins Schools. It's an honor to have all of you on the show. Thanks for having us. All right, let's talk about the past. Marie, let's start with you. Back in the day, your student memories at PJC, and as I stated previously, PJC alumna and Booker T. Washington Junior College alumna as well. Talk about that. <laughs> well, it's a great time to remember. I can remember 1951 when I graduated from Washington, uh, Washington High yes. School, Booker T. Washington, that is. And... Um, PJC was across the street, and Washington Junior College right. was on the other side. And of course, at that time, I could only attend one side, and that was Washington Junior College, where Dr. Wiggins, I believe, was the pre first president mm -hmm. of the college. PJC, now that is a huge, monumental stride for yes. that time. Yes. During segregation, right? Yes, yes, so, it was during that time. and The fact that he was the president, and I'm sure he imparted some positive things into your life, right? Yes, he did. And I suppose uh, trying to remember things as they were, it's pretty hard. <laughs> it's been a long time ago, <laughs> and I guess I have to kind of think about this. <laughs> no worries, no worries. We'll come back to you <laughs> in, in just a moment now. Eric, WSRE-TV, back during the time when you were general manager, from a technological standpoint, things were different with equipment, right? The well, things that we use. Yeah, well, equipment uh, was totally different. Uh, of course, everything was in black and white. And uh, we talked about how, yes, we can teach in black and white. Although, you know, there were some skeptics, but uh, we, we proved them wrong. WSRE did go live in 1967 as a pioneering spirit. I know you had a vision. <laughs> Give me one or two points about your vision back then. Well, um, first off, I came down for my interview uh, for the position and was shown the building over on Ninth Avenue. Uh, fantastic facility for the time. It was the first television building for public television in the state of Florida that was not recycled from some other one one step one uh, station 
in another city was an old Kaiser Frazier dealership. Now, not everybody remembers Kaiser Frazier. Some do, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that uh, uh, that was the big thing. We had we had terrific facilities. It was a, a totally empty building. But we were working on grants, and we received a grant to, uh, to equip it. All right. We're going to talk more about some of the television shows in just a moment. But, Edward, I'm going to come into your corner. In the 1950s, you attended PJC. You met your wife, Ginger, during that time. Share some fond moments with our viewers. Okay, great. Well, that's, like Maria grew up here, went to Pensacola High School. Uh, and then began here coincidentally 60 years ago. All right. Uh, this is our 70th anniversary, so it's, it was the 10th when I began, September of 1958. Uh, it was a great setting here. I mean, uh, and it was my only choice, uh, a chance, uh, you might say, at the time, financially, as so many students remain that way today, and what's one of the great things about this college and most uh, community colleges. But uh, it's totally different from today. I think there were three buildings out here then. It had just re relocated to uh, on the Ninth Avenue from downtown. Um, we had uh, the uh, administration building that's here. Uh, the bars building was being built uh, while I was here. And the Ashmore Auditorium. And I played baseball. And I think we had a Quonset hut. Uh, for uh, <laughs> for where we changed, and uh, might add a hose to, to okay. literally hose off with, and uh, no gymnasium. Uh, so uh, a ton has changed, but the most uh, everything, uh, the effects I've had from uh, Pensacola State College is, is very hard to enumerate them all. I guess the most lasting one you've mentioned. Yes. And I met this little cute brunette from South Alabama who came down here uh, to. Uh, Ten college, and we now have, uh, she after this, she went to FSU, I went to Florida, and some years later we got married, now we, we've hit 54 of them. So that's a pretty lasting effect from this college on, we, on, on us. We, <laughs> we can all imagine. Well, it's unbelievable, but she's right, David? Lady. <laughs> right, David, so you were at PJC, and let's talk about Delta Kappa Alpha. Let's do. Yes, let's You know, do. I, I uh, got to Pensacola Junior College in 1967, just got out of Scandia High School. When I hit the campus, it was a wow. It's nothing like high school. And I was trying to find my way through, and a friend of mine, Ronnie Llewellyn, said, we have a fraternity that was created back in 1961, first on campus, by the way. And it's a great bunch of guys. Why don't you pledge? And so I said, I'll come and see what's going on because I wasn't really into that kind of stuff. But once I got there and started meeting people, I'm gonna tell you now, it changed my life. That group of people that I got to know in that fraternity is unbelievable. We had our 50th anniversary recently and probably over 200 brothers from the past showed up, including Dr. Meadows, by the way, uh, at this reunion, and I've got to tell you, the camaraderie and friendship uh, that I got from that will never be matched anywhere. I've got to tell you, and the friends, and we're still all the best of friends. We call each other, we, we communicate. It's truly a miracle. David, did you find that being a member of a fraternity helps some of these gentlemen break out of a shell? Maybe I mean, shyness. And there's no question about it because I guess I was kind of a shy guy <laughs> when I was. I'm serious. When I was in high school, I spent most of my time surfing, and um, I was very much alone. But when I when I got involved with that fraternity, the doors open up, and I've got to tell you that's why I got involved with the uh, alumni association. Is that Pensacola Junior College? And I'm, I'm sorry, I still have a hard time with Pensacola State that's College. That's okay. It's, that's weird. It's PJC. <laughs> to but, you, to absolutely. Me. And, absolutely. Um, but it, I felt like that I owed something to it because it honestly changed the way I saw life. It changed the way that, that my future ended up. I can tell you that right now. And I think that fraternity was a main part of it. In fact, it was probably the driving part. So did you take a walk over to the Chadbourne Library to oh, see the memorial cabinet? Yes, I did. In fact, our fraternity is going to have a, a big cabinet in there with all of our memorabilia. Uh, we're in the process right now of loading it up. It's going to be a, a great memorial to not only Delta Kappa Alpha, but all of the Greeks that were on campus at that time, because there were a lot of us. 
And we all, even though we were not in the same fraternity, there were a lot of sororities, but we were still friends. And what Absolutely. we'd like to say is we want everybody to know about it. That camaraderie is there. Marie. I, I just got it get, together now. No, you are fine. I just got you it together. But let me tell fine. you something. <laughs> tell me something. Listen, these three men are younger than I am. They didn't go to school when I went to school. That's why they could come out and, <laughs> and say it so quickly. I had to go way back to 1951. You're amazing, by the way. Really? <laughs> 1951. And it was kind of hard for me to bring it out. You've done great. But I tell you. you really yes, have. you are. Listen, listen. I just, <laughs> from 1951, it was a great great time of the year for me because Washington Junior College was standing there waiting for me to come. That's great. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me because at that time I didn't have money to go off to school and this college was sitting there in my front porch almost and of course I had the opportunity to attend and it was really great for me. Marie, think about a lot of the women at that time who did not have an opportunity to attend college and the legacy that you have left for not only your children and your grandchildren. So words of wisdom, I know you have shared with them, correct? Yes. They can't, they can't believe today that my first degree was from Washington Junior College. You know, usually they ask, Grandma, did you go to FSU? Because I'm always yelling for FSU, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, no. I went to Washington Junior College. Well, can I go? No. You see, they can go to FSU. Those doors are open. That's right. Now. They're open now for everyone can go, you know. You can go. But at the same time, Washington Junior College was a school that has really brought us forward. So many people in our community attended Washington Junior College as well as Pensacola. All right, and there is that connection, yes. isn't there? Now oh. you can go back. Oh, listen, <laughs> you are lovely. Eric, back to you. You have done a lot of consulting work. So you were here at WSRE-TV, but you've also helped other stations, correct? Yes, uh, once I uh, uh, left um, being fully employed as the state director for public radio and television for Florida. Uh, another uh, two friends, we created a uh, consulting firm and we have consulted with public radio and TV stations coast to coast and north and south. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, as we were getting a little long in the tooth, we decided uh, maybe somebody else needs to do that. So uh, I've retired from that part of it also. Passing on the baton, but here's something. 2003 recipient of a PBS Leadership Award. Aptly so. Congratulations. Well, yeah, thank you. That, that, that was, that was uh, uh, you know, all of the Florida stations helped with that. But my job over there was lobbying uh, for public radio and television, and during the it, it, that award was allegedly based on three hundred and some odd million dollars that uh, we had gotten, and this building uh, yes. was funded by a lot of that. You deserve a fun fact about you for all the other guests in this segment may or may not have known this. He's a USA track and field official. Have yeah. you ever, ever met Justin Gatlin, the fastest man in the world? Well, as a matter of fact, I have, <laughs> uh, but not while he was running. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was off the track yeah, at that he, time. Uh, well, he's a Pensacola yes, person. Yes, he is. Absolutely, yes, he is. And, and a really nice guy. Yep. He really is. So, Edward, back to you. Now, let's talk about the beautiful clock tower on the campus, right? And the fact that the dedication ceremonies were held, you played a hand in this, didn't you? I was one of the speakers there. Uh, the, uh, I believe that was for the 50th uh, anniversary uh, celebration of the college. Uh, I think Dr. Ed Hartzell was the president then and came up uh, with the uh, proposal to build the, uh, the tower. Uh, I believe it originally was going to be just the alumni tower, uh, but uh, it was decided to name it uh, for M.J. Mingy, who coincidentally was my best friend. 
Uh, we had graduated from the University of Florida College of Law together and remained best friends uh, for the rest of our, our lives. Uh, but it was named for MJ. He had been the general counsel here for 31 yes. years. He graduated from here. Uh, and uh, like me, the two of us, this was our love, uh, was this college. And um, he was uh, nobody more faithful, more influential than MJ. So it was named for him. A wonderful ceremony honoring the 50th, uh, celebrating the 50th year. Uh, and that's when it was built. So that was a, a quick 20 years ago. Uh, could I add one thing? Yes, you That's, can. Please do. I, I want to take just one thing that Marie had said, and, and I do this because I share it with my grandchildren and so many other young people today. When I began here, although a little bit be after Marie, <laughs> it, 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 there still was a totally segregated society. Mm -hmm. I left here and I went to the University of Florida and I spent two years there. I never attended a class with an African American. I went to the University of Florida College of Law. I never attended. So that's how relatively yes. recent it is, at least to us, yes. th this change. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a fantastic, if we're talking about change from yes, then to now. Yes, exciting times to live in this, right this now. Is it. It is. Yes. And, and the young people just cannot comprehend that. Yes, They, they can't comprehend it. And so they're I learning to, though, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Through what you're saying. Yeah. You yeah. also have a heavy hand in the foundation, or PSC foundation. Well, years ago we had a real small foundation. I and served as president back in my 30s, which just a couple of years ago. <laughs> and uh, we struggled along, uh, didn't have any ty type of uh, giving like we have now. Uh, my wife, uh, I'm proud to say, uh, has tried to be as uh, active here as, or as I. She uh, has served two different years as the general fund uh, campaign chair uh, for the foundation. So. Uh, it's grown, and we're very proud of what the, the foundation has and is accomplishing today. It's, 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 it's wonderful. And David, we can't end the segment without giving you one last word. Talk about David Collins Schools briefly for us, please. You know, it's interesting. I got a degree from the University of West Florida in education, and I wanted to teach school. My daddy was a teacher. And the public school system, I went there, but there was something missing in my life, and I got a real estate license. Then I got a job offer to teach for the largest real estate school in the state of Florida. And all of a sudden everything has evolved. And I actually own three real estate schools now all over the state of Florida. You are doing so much for all of us. Guess it has been such a pleasure having all of you with us this evening. I know I have learned quite a bit. Thank you for having us. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks, as we head to break, we want to give you a preview of what's to come. Envision yourselves studying hard for your classes and then letting off some steam with a vast array of athletic options. We have what you need at Pensacola State College. Hashtag PSC Proud Pirates. Here's what a couple of our athletes who happen to be best friends want you to know about their experiences. My name is Bryce Hunt. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, education major here at Pensacola State. Um, I also play on the men's basketball team, and I chose here to come here because the coaching staff, they showed a lot of interest in me. Uh, I'm from Cincinnati, so Florida, moving to Florida, having different weather, it's hot every day. I love that type of weather, so that's why I chose to come here. I'm Kayla Liefman. I'm a sophomore here at Pensacola State. Um, I'm on the softball team. I'm a physical education major. Um, I chose to come here because I love the coaching staff. It's really such like a family, homey type feel. <laughs> um, and this is my best friend, yes. but uh, we love it here and Indeed. all athletic departments are amazing.
everyone. As we continue our journey, we'll experience a name change from Pensacola Junior College to Pensacola State College. During this trek into the present, we'll share fond memories with some notable guests. First, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ed Meadows, president of Pensacola State College. He's joined by the lovely Dona Asri. WSRE TV liaison volunteer and supporter. As we delve into sports and artistic elements, let's welcome Bill Hamilton, Director of Athletics, and Chris Lynn, Department Head for Visual Arts. It's so good to have all of you here this evening. Now, Dr. Meadows, let's talk about the name changes, mergers, etc. Please expand on that. We have a rich history, don't we? We certainly do. And you know, we began as Pensacola Junior College in 1948, and then some years later, we actually had a merger with Booker T. Washington Junior College. Uh, they became a part of Pensacola Junior College. And then in 2010, uh, because we began offering workforce baccalaureate degrees, our Board of Trustees uh, chose to change our name to Pensacola State College, and Ms. Donna Usry was actually on the board at that time when that name change occurred, as well as Mr. Ed Moore, who was on this program. Dr. Meadows, 10 years that you've been here now, I know that when you were named president back in 2008, on your first day walking on campus, imagine that, a day in the life of Dr. Meadows. Is there one thing that was at the forefront of your mind at that time? Well, the, the thing, uh, the best memory that I have of that first day is that I met with Tom Delano, the retiring president. and. He says, Ed, you're going to have five years to fix my messes and five years to make your own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll get back to you in just a moment, Dr. Meadows. Dona, you told me in the green room that you wanted to say a few words to Dr. Meadows regarding how much you appreciate him, so go right ahead. Well, when we had the presidential search, we had four candidates that were in the fin final pool, and Dr. Meadows was by far the first choice. And the best thing I did as a trustee yes, for Pensacola trustee. State is to cast my vote for him to be our president. All right, very good choice. Now, how long did you serve as a trustee? Uh, I was appointed in 1999 by the governor and I served 15 years. All right, we have much more to discuss with you, but I'm going to shift over here to the world of sports. Now, Come my on. favorite sport is basketball, so let's start with that, Bill. All right. <laughs> PSE, right, PJC, PSE. Right. Let's National talk about our champions history. in 93. 93. Under Bob Marlin, had the player of the year, had the player of the tournament, MVP of the tournament, and uh, those guys were back here in June. They were, and I missed that. Yep. What a sad thing. Let me ask you this. What about any NBA prospects? Have we had any? Um, we've had several. Uh, we're um, looking into starting a Hall of Fame, and I've reached out to some of the older coaches, retired uh, administrators, and found out we had some back in the early 80s that were drafted in the NBA. Uh, we had Anthony Goldwire off of uh, the first team I saw play here in 1991, and uh, then we had... Um, a young man that played for the Miami Heat won three rings. Uh, Joel Anthony from Canada left us, went to UNLV, and then played oh, probably 15 years in the NBA. So in terms of athletics, can you name the sports that we offer here at the college, please? Because I know there are a lot of viewers out there who are quite athletic. Oh, sure. Men and women's basketball, volleyball, baseball, and softball. And softball won a national championship in 93. And we used to have golf. Men's golf won a national championship in 92. And our women's basketball uh, got to the Final Four in 11 and 12, back to back, and was undefeated in 2011. The first game they lost in 2011 was in the Final Four. All right. Wow, Chris, that's some amazing news. Great stats, right? <laughs> it <laughs> okay. is. Let's talk about the ribbon cutting. Charles Lamar Studio. I know your face must have been beaming that day. It was. It's it, it's a, an amazing facility. We're we're so happy and and fortunate to have the support we have from the Lamar Switzer and Riley families um, to to help fund that along with some money that Dr. Meadows found. Um, that's the studio now with the gallery we have there. I think is really going to be a game changer for us because we can do things there because of the size of the gallery now that we could never do before. Okay, Anna Lamar Switzer Center. Can you give us some background regarding her? 
Yes, um, Anna Lamar Switzer was the daughter of the, if I'm not mistaken, was the daughter of the gentleman who started uh, Lamar Advertising back in the day when it was a sign painting business. Um, she was very involved with the arts and, and education in this community. And when she passed away, I think it was in 99, the family wanted to do something to commemorate her. And so at, the, at that time, they donated a million dollars to the art department. Uh, the state of Florida at that time would match gifts. And so it became two million, and that was the first addition to the art building then. And it, I think it was completed in 2000. And then we thought that was, you know, that was great, and that was it. And then the family came back uh, a few years ago and wanted to do that again. So with their uh, generous donations and with Dr. Mandel being able to secure other funding, that's how we built the new Lamar studio. Amazing. Now I must go back to you, Dona, because you and Chris have a connection here. Let's talk <laughs> about Manafilla Bowl and Pick a Bowl fundraiser. Give us the back story. Um, I was serving as the president of the Mana Guild and Susan Bullock was president of the Mana Board and Mana needed some money. And so we put a get together a committee. I mean, how else do you get things done these days without a we committee? We work together, right? <laughs> Teamwork is dream work. Um, <laughs> we had been to Virginia to our sons and he had shown me these beautiful bowls in his cabinet that he had gotten at an empty bowl. He took his family each fall to an empty bowl in Virginia and they paid $25. They got the bowl, they tasted the soup, they brought the bowl home. So I presented that to this committee and they liked the idea. So then we got to think, who's going to make all these bowls for us? Bill Clover. And I instantly thought <laughs> of the Pensacola Junior College okay. at that time. <laughs> at that time. Art department because they were an award-winning department. Yes. And I went with another board member to see Dr. Delano and he was receptive. He was the president at that time. Yes. Right. And he said, uh, let me talk to Chris Lynn. And that's how it got started. How it all started. got started. <laughs> and I tell you, it's such a wonderful thing, isn't it? It is. Some people might get hungry, so what kind of soup is normally served? Oh, Filling any, that bowl, right? any kind. You get your bowl, you, you, well, you get your bowl, you go to what, 10, 12 stations? I think this year, 16, yeah. 16 stations. They have water, they have bread. So they have a beautiful <laughs> auction of uh, pretty things that you can bid on. And Mana gets it's the awesome money, and, they receive the and funds. Pensacola so State, thanks to Dr. Meadows, yes. he continued with Christ, and it has been a very Grown. success. Year after year, Dr. Meadows passing the bowl. You're probably a little full after 16 <laughs> rounds, I would imagine. <laughs> so let's talk about some major highlights of your presidency over these 10 years, and I'm going to have you with me for several segments. So let's just start off. I don't know, something that comes to mind right now. Well, right now, I'm thinking about Mana Food Pantry. Okay. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, there are several uh, people that were instrumental uh, in the partnership that we have with Mana. And uh, Donna Usry and Chris Lynn and uh, Bill Clover, who, yes. who made uh, over 6,500 bowls for Mana. Uh, <clears throat> and he recently passed. We have a memorial service for him uh, coming up and also a fundraiser to endow a scholarship in his honor. But Mana has honored him by naming the fill a bow and the pick a bow, uh, the clover, yes. fill a bow and pick a bow event. So I think that's a, a great testament to the community service uh, that Bill did, but also the same spirit uh, resides in um, the Pensacola State College family uh, for volunteerism. And you take athletics. Uh, our coaches make sure <clears throat> that our uh, student athletes spend many, many hours each year doing volunteer service in the community. Uh, our student organizations and our clubs um, spend hundreds of hours each year at giving back to the community in many, many different ways because we're trying to not only educate our students in the disciplines that they study, but also educate them about society and life. And so the value of Pensacola State is that we're ingrained in the community. And that's what I think about uh, the family spreads beyond just uh, the halls and the doors. 
and the classroom. It spreads into the community, and, and that's what's so special and unique about what uh, we bring to uh, Northwest Florida. And, that, uh, and that's why Pensacola State is a beloved institution in Absolutely. our community. Absolutely, well-rounded yes. individuals, right? We all are part of a great team, exceptional. Yes. So, Bill, mm -hmm. back to the arena of sports and boosters. You need support, don't you? That's right. We, so, over the years, how has that come? Well, we have a championship booster club. Uh, when I started as AD, we had uh, about $20,000 in the bank at any one time during the year, which, uh, you know, given inflation, uh, that was probably a fair amount. And this year, we've had over $150,000 in the bank. Uh, with Dr. Right. Meadows' help and leadership, we've started corporate boosters, and uh, we do events for boosters. Uh, since he's been here as president, we've started uh, and had our eighth annual uh, golf tournament. And, all the golf uh, lovers out there. And all the golf right. lovers and hackers, too. Okay. We take them all. <laughs> and uh, the community supports it not only in players, but they give, they donate. And uh, our athletes work that, that golf tournament. He mentioned our community service. We do up to 40 events each year with our student athletes. All the while, this past year, maintaining a 3.0 GPA, graduating 88% of our athletes, and placing 96%. So I think our coaches, uh, as being part of this family, deserve a lot of credit. Our tutors, our faculty and staff. Everyone. Oh, yeah. It, Everyone. It's, uh, it, like he says, it's a unity of community here. I like that. Mm -hmm. I'll steal that from you, Peggy. Okay. Unity of community. <laughs> Chris, let's talk about Distinguished Artists and the Addy Awards. Well, the Distinguished Artists, we've been very fortunate over the years to have brought in some really, um, for lack of a better word, big-name artist here. Um, a few years ago, we were able to bring in uh, the artist Christo, um, we had begun talks okay. with he and his wife, Jean-Claude, and then she passed away, unfortunately, and so we kind of stalled for a while, and he came back and said, you know, he wanted to go ahead and honor his commitment, so he still came and did that. We've, since then, we've had um, Steve McCurry, um, the famous photographer who did the Afghan girl on the cover yes. of, of and National we see, Geographic. Yes, we see that. Yes, okay. uh, he's been here, and um, both of these artists were so impressed with the facilities and the way they were treated here, they each donated works to our permanent collection, which is really amazing. Yeah. Artwork can be very soothing, too. Yes. <laughs> Might <clears throat> I add that. Dr. Meadows, South Santa Rosa Center, the groundbreaking ceremony and then the ribbon cutting, would you just tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, in 2010, um, through the hard work of uh, two guys, uh, Tom Delano, the president, and uh, Larry Bracken, who was our uh, uh, government relations person, uh, they uh, convinced Tallahassee that we needed some money for a center in South Santa Rosa. And so we were able to uh, build the South Santa Rosa Center. It's 108 acres. Uh, we have a 100-year master plan for it, but we have okay. a beautiful 33,000 square foot facility there where uh, students can come and do dual enrollment and uh, uh, our other students can come and get their associate degree. We're getting ready to uh, launch, expand our cybersecurity program to the South Santa Rosa Center. Um, and you know, we, uh, we, we have students that um, excel academically, and, and you mentioned the Addy Awards. Yes. Uh, we win two-thirds of all the Addy Awards every year, and we've actually Bravo. had national national award-winning students for the Addy Awards. That's exceptional. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's indicative of the quality of the faculty uh, and the quality of the institution overall. And uh, our faculty at the South Santa Rosa Center, they are dedicated to academic excellence just like our visual arts faculty and our performing arts faculty are dedicated to excellence in the classroom here at the Pensacola campus. That's amazing. It's been a pleasure having all of you on the show tonight. And Dr. Meadows, would you stick around a little while? Certainly. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Folks, as we head to break, did you know that Pensacola State College hosts exceptional festivals and community events at many of its campus locations? They draw huge crowds, including robust participation from our president, Dr. Ed Meadows. Get ready because we'll hear more from him in our next segment. But just to let you know, he's a man who wears many hats. In fact, he seems to have no problem as an outdoorsman working his magic 
at the Milton Campus Lumberjack Festival. Take a look. What was it like throwing that big old piece of wood? A lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I thought I would just throw it out there about 30 feet. And I, I didn't even get half of that. And why did you decide to participate? I just said, well, why not? You know, uh, you might as well um, try to see um, what you can do. You, you know, and I've never done this before. I've always just come and watched. And I wouldn't dare throw the axe, you know, but uh, a piece of uh, pup wood, you know, why not? Hello everyone, during this segment we'll expand our discussion with more innovative things taking place at Pensacola State College right now. I'm happy to welcome back Dr. Ed Meadows, president of Pensacola State College. He's joined by Dr. Anthea Amos, dean of the Milton campus, Warrington campus dean Dusty Sluter, and Mike Listow. Department Head of Applied Technology and Professional Services who will give us the rundown on continuing education in kids' college. So, Mike, let's start with you. Sure. When mom and dad are at work and the kids are sulking around the house, kids' college is something that they can definitely know. They'll help their youngsters expand their horizons, right? So, tell us why parents should explore this opportunity for their children. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, um, what we were previously talking about before coming on air is we've just finished our 28th year. Um, that's a long time it in this sure community. Is. Um, so much so we've had grandkids um, of grandparents that have taken or w at one a time been, been a kids college student. The other neat thing about that program is that, you know, they may start at the college in kids college and then come back later on as an actual college student. So we've had instances where that has occurred as well. Um, safety is key with kids college. Sure the, the children are monitored at all times. Um, we bring on a staff that that works in the school district and um, you know safety is, is a top priority so parents can rest assured that their children will be monitored at all times. As far as the types of classes that we offer we have a pretty much anything for any interest. Um, we have um, st a lot of STEM uh, courses that incorporate technology. That's great. Um, and then we have, um, you know, some other course offerings if kids just want to have fun, just as swimming in the pool or, you know, sport classes. It's really what differentiates us from other programs is the options available. Options. Right. So speaking of fun, for those who like to cook, Mm -hmm. That's huge for the youngsters these days, it right? Is, yeah. Do you ever have any cooking championships during kids' college or special <clears throat> events? Well, we do. Um, one of the classes that we offered, it was called Kids in the Kitchen. Um, we also had another class that was Plants for Food and Fun. So we kind of take two approaches where we actually teach some of the nutrition aspects of the courses and, and of food. But then, of course, with the Kids in Kitchen class, that gave them the opportunity to actually make some desserts and, oh, and you know, some, okay. even some cultural cuisine as well. So for all the parents out there who are watching, I guess they're writhing in their seats, okay, summer's over, but when can I register my child for Kids College? Can we do it now, or do they well, have to wait? It's it's part of you know looking at at the school districts yes. you know calendars and seeing when the kids are out because of course when school is out we will always have a place for kids to enroll, um, and the ages that we currently service is six to twelve six year olds. Six to twelve. 
Um, but you know, look somewhere around March is usually when we'll release that's, our that's schedule. A key, key um, but parents can absolutely get an idea of our program and our past program, and can really call our department anytime to find out some more information. Right. Log on to PensacolaState.edu right. as well. <laughs> that's true. So, Dr. Amos. Earlier, we showed a clip of Dr. Meadows, the great outdoorsman. So let's talk about your campus. Some serious strides being made there. Your growth has doubled in size. That's yes, huge. That's huge. Yes, the, the campus started at Canal Street in Milton and was moved over um, with the first building with the Massey Building in 1986. And it's just been exploding ever since. So we have we are up to almost 2,000 students now, so it's great. I want you to talk about the first ever Relay for Life event held in the state of Florida. That was 1995, 1995. right on the Milton campus, and it's annually, so they've had one every year since. So that was a huge thing, American Cancer Society. I'm going to come back to you in just a moment. Dr. Sluter, scooting over to the Warrington campus, and it's a lovely campus, folks. I've taken a tour myself. There are a lot of health programs offered. Just give us a snippet of what is offered there, if sure. you will. Warrington Campus is located on the west side of Pensacola, and it offers a variety of services, um, such as student advising, registration, bookstore, library, testing center, computer lab, um, general education courses, math, English, science, uh, history. We also have um, the health programs. And, um, and those are quite popular. Yes, they are very popular. And, and so the Warrington campus hosts um, um, a wealth of health programs and, and um, um, from four year, two year to, to certificate, eight week programs. Something that interested me when I took my tour as a new faculty member, human patient simulators, the huge lab that you have there, and we have some donors that I know that you want to mention as well. Right, Bill and Mary Echo Smart um, um, were donors for the Patient Simulation Center, and that center opened its doors in 2006. And the center is uh, used for health students um, that are in the various health programs and learning different skills, um, not only clinical skills, but the student also learns the behavioral skills, uh, therapeutic communication, and they're able to interact with high fidelity simulators um, as they would in a live clinical setting, but in a more safer environment where they can learn, make errors if um, so deemed so, and we can um, teach and remediate the student in the simulation center. Something interesting that I learned, and I was getting a cup of coffee at a famous location, and one of your students served me a lot of fans out there. And I said, okay, for the simulation lab, do we have names for these lifelike individuals? And she said, yes. I said, that's amazing. And I know that there's one that can actually give birth. Yes. Am I right? Victoria, um, she does. She's our maternal child simulator. Um, college purchased uh, Victoria last summer. And she um, does um, deliver a live um, patient um, infant simulated birth. And so it's, it's quite an experience for the students to actually not only see the live birth, but how to um, manage the care of the mother and the infant. And um, it's something that they may not see in the live clinical setting. They may have a chance to see that and they may not, but we can guarantee on campus that That's everyone amazing. is gonna see a live simulated birth. So they can cough, they can sneeze, yeah. let me check your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing. Mike, mm -hmm. back to you. Sure. Continuing education. So let's say someone wants to become proficient in Excel or MS Word. There's so many possibilities available. There is. Yeah. Real estate as well. Correct. Talk yeah. about some of the most popular continuing education programs. Sure. Um, you know, the community influence in our programs are, is very important. Um, and listening to the community in, in our, the types of courses and the types of programs that we offer is very important. And that's something we try to um, really change each semester and, and it's, it's really we, in, we invent our schedule each, each semester and everybody looks forward to getting their booklets and seeing what new courses we're going to offer. So some of our more popular ones, um, we offer a motorcycle safety course. Um, so if somebody wants to get their motorcycle endorsement, 
Um, Good. We have um, some courses as far as our aquatics program. So a lot of those seniors that are looking for those low impact, um, you know, ways to yes. be active, um, they can enroll in our aqua dynamics course, you know, our water aerobics course. Culinary um, too, as well. Culinary, right. we're, we're going to be expanding our current culinary offer, offerings for spring term, which I'm excited about. Um, but we do have some various culinary courses at this point. Uh, corporate training too. Um, so again, as you were touching on, as far as yes. if somebody needs an Excel certification or a Word certification, they can get that through our department. A lot of great so things right, happening, absolutely. Mike. So excited. Dr. Meadows. The Chadbourne Library has gotten a facelift, per se. Talk about the ribbon cutting and, and the new enhancements there. Well, this actually occurred a number of years ago, okay. but, um, yeah, you know, the, the Chadbourne Foundation has been very generous to our college over the years, and so when we did this ribbon cutting a few years back, it was a $6 million renovation that roughly doubled the size and capacity of our library, and so we named that in honor of Ed Chadbourne um, and the, the generosity that the Chadbourne Foundation had um, over the years uh, provided scholarships for uh, several generations of students. That is amazing. Dr. Amos, let's talk about Milton campus and the relationship with the University of Florida. Yes, we have, we're a joint use facility in the University of Florida provides two degrees that, that the students can come through our programs here at Pensacola State, either any of the campuses or any other campus, and they go on to be natural resource conservationists or plant science. Um, there are about 60 students at the University of Florida right now, undergraduates, they, in addition to that, they have graduates and PhD students. So the students can come through us and go right on and finish a degree. I have to add this, everyone, as a faculty member, Dr. Amos was so nice to me my first day teaching at the Milton campus back in 2014. I started as an adjunct, now I'm a tenure track professor in the business department, but that bright smile and welcoming persona, you are amazing. And such great things happening there at the campus. Everyone, it's been such a pleasure having you on during this segment. We sure do appreciate what you're doing for Pensacola State College. Okay, folks, as we head to break, here's a reminder that great education leads to great opportunities. Are you ready to take that first educational step? You are not alone. Pensacola State College is here for you. Apply now. Visit us at pensacolastate.edu. We'll be back in a moment. Many bright things on the horizon for Pensacola State College. We'll explore several as we continue the discussion. Once again, it's such a pleasure to have Dr. Ed Meadows, president of the college, on set once again. He's joined by Morris Buchanan, department head for mathematics and computer sciences. During this segment, we'll also share a special message from Madeline Pumariega, chancellor of the Florida College System. But first, Dr. Meadows, Please share with us why workforce development is such a vital necessity in an ever-changing global environment. Well, you know, the, today uh, in business and industry, um, the, the biggest need is uh, an adaptive and um, trained workforce. Uh, Henry Ford once said, the only thing worse than 
um, training someone and having them leave is not training them and having them stay. Oh, so uh, approximately 50% of our student enrollment um, is workforce training programs that uh, would either be uh, certificates or associate or baccalaureate degrees. And uh, we, uh, we pride ourselves in the fact that we have a very diverse um, uh, degree program in uh, applied technology, advanced technology, health sciences, um, human services. Uh, the, the big area right now, yes. and the reason uh, we have our department chair here uh, with us is cybersecurity. That's right, and we'll get to that in just a moment. And Dr. Meadows, back to you briefly here regarding workforce development. I noticed that welding has expanded to the main campus. Would you like to elaborate on that a little bit? Well, we were very fortunate uh, some years ago to uh, receive a part of a federal grant that allowed us to um, develop uh, mobile training units for uh, welding. And uh, we had a very limited welding program at the time. The, uh, the mobile training units allowed us to move those units to the uh, to Sentry. Okay. And um, we were able to train a very large uh, percentage of the population in Sentry for high paying jobs uh, in the shipyards. And uh, we, uh, we had enough money left over that we were able to actually have a stand up, a standalone uh, welding program that we, uh, uh, we now are operating on this campus. So we have three programs going in welding, one on the Pensacola okay. campus, one at Milton, and one in Century. That's amazing. 70 years, gentlemen, such a great milestone for <laughs> Pensacola State College. Madeline Pumariega is the chancellor for the Florida College System, and right now we're going to pause because she would like to share this special message. Congratulations, Pensacola State College, for 70 years of making a difference and changing lives in your community. The excellence and innovation in your institution is a hallmark of success for Florida. We have so many students here at Pensacola State College that excel in their programs of study. Dr. Meadows, let's talk about Skills USA and the history here at Pensacola State College. Well, that's a student organization near and dear to my heart because it allows students to uh, participate in head-to-head -head competition, competition uh, in their chosen disciplines. And uh, we actually are in a three-year cycle of hosting the State Skills USA Conference, where uh, the entire state of secondary school and post-secondary Edu educators bring students here for head-to-head -head competition and uh, it allows students to uh, uh, gain uh, confidence uh, in, in knowing that they can yes. compete in the workforce and it also allows the workforce to take a look at them and their skill sets. That's awesome. Morris, let's talk about cyber security. There are many threats out there right now. Why is this so important for us to take this seriously? Well seems like every time you turn on the news, there's mention of a new data breach. Uh, I believe there was one earlier today involving a European airline. Uh, if we don't have a data, be data breach, we've got some kind of malware or ransomware going on. There are just all kinds of things that fit under this thing called cyber crimes, which basically is just the picture of anything uh, illegal that's used one or more components from the internet. And so it's not just identity theft or the fraud that someone commits from that or even the transference of funds that way, but it goes much, much further. I mean, this involves spamming. It involves the malware. It involves right. spyware. Um, the list just goes on and on, and it goes down, you know, to include, you know, really, really very bad things that, that just occur. And so that's why it is so important to to look at some of that. One of the things that we do, we look at both of the areas, cybersecurity. How do we prevent a crime from occurring? That's part of one of the programs that we have. The other that we have, cyber forensics. cyber forensics. A crime has occurred. How do we find out who the true culprit is for that and do what's necessary to make sure that uh, the uh, people are, are at least taken care of as they should be. Let's talk about our that. relationship here at PSC with the military and Cisco Academy. 
Yes, well, Cisco Academy is one of the areas under our cybersecurity uh, group. In that, overall, we, we um, support 45 academic institutions as well as other insta uh, institutions like you've mentioned. Uh, this is across four states. Uh, among that, uh, we train instructors for these academic institutions with Cisco. Uh, and affects of around 8,000 students, 8,000 plus students under that group. So it's a very, very important part with that. We also provide locally some SPDs, uh, professional development. Uh, Essential, I think everyone yes. should take part in those. Very much so, very much so. Dr. Meadows, where does the time go? I would like for you, if you don't mind, to give us some parting words of encouragement. Ten years here at Pensacola State College, you've done such an exceptional job. For our viewers, the students, there are a lot of stakeholders involved, right? So speak freely, please. Words of oh, encouragement. I'm very fortunate to, to be the president of a college that has uh, exceptional faculty and staff uh, that understand the mission of helping students, however they come to us, uh, get to where uh, they need to be to be a productive citizen uh, and, uh, and a contributing member of society. Uh, we, we have a, a vast array of, of programs. Uh, we keep our eye on the ball in terms of future programs. Yes. Uh, someone once said that 50% um, of the training that we do today are for jobs that currently don't exist. So uh, cybersecurity is a, is a prime example of this program that started about six years ago at Pensacola State. Uh, we were the first to offer a baccalaureate degree in cybersecurity, and now our enrollment is quadrupled because of the need in the workforce. So uh, in, in a nutshell, I, I'm very fortunate to be uh, the president of a dynamic institution here in Northwest Florida. Thank you all so very much. Such impacting words. Everyone, as we close the show, I'd also like to thank all of you, our viewers, for joining us during this inspirational walk down memory lane. In the midst of it all, we transitioned from Pensacola Junior College to Pensacola State College, exploring the past, present, and future. And as all of our guests can attest, 70 years and counting, the best is yet to come. So join us in this next chapter. There's something for everyone. At Pensacola State College, you can hashtag go here to get there. For more information, log on to PensacolaState.edu. I'm Ramika Vincent Leary. Have a good evening. And remember to keep it locked in right here on WSRE PBS for the Gulf Coast.